Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Timberborn, my favorite game about beavers. The developers reached out to me again to do another sponsored video, and I thought we'd do something a little bit different. I'm going to be playing on my own custom colony, but we're not going to be starting with just seven beavers. We're going to be starting with 500. 10,000 food and water should be enough to keep my colony going, and I'm, I'm going to reduce food and water consumption down to half. I think I'm going to have a hard time keeping these guys alive in the beginning. Uh, that took an awful lot longer to load than usual. I think I should give this town an appropriate name. Graveyard seems like a good call. Oh my god, look at the beavers spill out of the building! It's so many. Uh, I suppose if we're going to have any hope of keeping these guys alive, we're going to have to actually start harvesting some resources. Alright, first woodcutting flags are up, although I do think I need to actually connect them via a road first. Alright, they're connected up and now pretty much everybody is like competing for a very small number of jobs. Rotsack? Why would you have a beaver called Rotsack? He's age 20. His parents very, very clearly didn't like him. Oh, buildings can't complete if beavers are standing on top of them. I need to like get my beavers to leave. Maybe expanding to another island or two might give me a little bit more room to actually put these beavers to work because they're currently all just standing around waiting to die. It's like a Mobius just bucket of beavers just completely clipping into each other and running in little circles. Oh, look, they're making a giant cuddle puddle because they're all having a nap. Oh, look how cute it is. Oh, it's adorable. Probably the most important part of a town is to get your science going. And I think we can very easily afford to get six inventors going right now. There's something mesmerizing about watching just this many beavers run around aimlessly with no goal. <laughs> my my beavers are growing up at an alarming rate, but I have over 300 unemployed beavers and they all get hungry in waves. So my food ticks down at like a ridiculous rate. I don't even have a farm built yet. So I'm not even sure if I can sustain this many beavers. I, in fact, I know I can't sustain this many beavers. Wait, why are my people dying? I have thousands of food. Is there a limit to the number of people that can grab food from this area? I'm so confused. <laughs> So many are dying. This is not how it was meant to be. I'm actually losing population already. I guess the one upside of that is I won't eat as much food anymore. Those poor beavers. We have all the food and water you need. I don't, I just, I just, I don't get why they're not eating. Well, the big die-off wave is starting to happen now. Uh, I think we've lost over a hundred beavers. You know what? This is like the survival of the fittest, okay? The beavers that were smart enough to go to the town hall to get food and water, those are the ones that get to go on. The one big advantage of having such a massive inefficient economy and a massive manpower is like I can actually just run a really bad <laughs> deficit in terms of resources and there's just a new beaver to step up and take up the reins. So all in all, I think starting with over 250 beavers was probably a mistake, but I think I can make it work. I think I can make it work. Nice, we finally got ourselves our second builder hall. So this practically doubled our construction capacity because now we can have four more beavers working on actually building things we're still losing droves of beavers every single day but the hemorrhaging of population has slowed down a little bit at the very least i wonder what happens if some of my beavers get caught in here because i did leave a gap between these buildings i'm not sure they're going to have a way to get out if this house gets built all right finally we got our very first forester up so we can start actually growing some trees Oh my god, it takes like 12 days to grow a pine tree? 30 for a maple? I don't even think they're worth cutting down if they take that long. All right, we got our planting area down and I'm just growing like some of every type of tree and my hope is that eventually that'll just give me a constant supply of new trees. Oh, I believe... Has the water gone? What is happening here? Why is there no water over here? Are we in the drought? Or did building my little dam here actually change the flow of water? Interesting. Building my little dam here changed the flow of water, so the water receded over here. Cool. Not my intention, but it seems to have... <laughs> I've accidentally changed the, uh, the landscape. Beautiful. Now, while I did kind of screw up the water by doing that, we do have access to this new area over here and a whole bunch of extra wood and some harvestable bushes. As well, like all of this like green land we can use for, for crop planting. I think I'll replace one of these uh, dam blocks with a platform so water can actually flow through here. Because the water drying up over here is actually not good for me. Oh, finally, I've got the water flowing back in and my trees won't dry out anymore. Man, I had to like completely rework my plan here. Another drought is coming, so I'm going to have to deal with that too. 
we do have a healthy 285 beavers left, although we have no housing, so we are not getting any new children, which is going to present its own problem. I think getting a renewable wood supply is probably our best bet <laughs> for the future. Mm, my food stocks are starting to get dangerously low, although I am only now down to 270 beavers. The big problem is there just isn't enough wood on the map, and I haven't been able to connect over to this nice maple tree area. But if I can get over here... Oh man, is there a lot of wood for me to pick up. I mean, who knew Beaver Society runs almost entirely on wood? I guess this is a lumberpunk game, so that makes a lot more sense. Well, the drought has started, so all the water is going to go away and we'll get a lot less growth. It's only going to be a two-day drought, so it shouldn't be too bad. The lack of growth on my forestry areas, though, will hurt me a lot. Especially because the water is already starting to dry up over here. Yeah, there it goes. It's all gone. It's getting suctioned out of the map. All right, amazing. We made it over to the new island. So be able to pick up all of these trees and possibly to save our town. I thought, you know, starting off with 500 beavers, I thought this would be a cakewalk. But <laughs> every day, uh, every day presents a new struggle. Well, the drought has ended and we've made it through it pretty well. So we should start the water pretty soon. I have no idea where the water even comes from on this map. Like, I'm just baffled. I've been, like, searching now. Oh, here. Oh, so it comes from over here. Is that the only place that where water comes from on the entire map? Is that one giant river? Yeah, it looks like all of the water for the entire map just comes from here. I don't know about you guys, but I get, like, a really satisfying feeling watching the river flow and, like, restore the, the color to the landscape. Yeah, look at it ripple down through here. I actually kind of wonder how they managed to do the water physics in this game. Yes, restore my crops. Although, uh, I think some of my crops actually died. Yeah, it looks like uh, farms don't survive that well. I tried to build a little dam here to redirect a little bit more of the water through and around to my trees. And it's kind of working. I might be able to save a lot of these trees. They are coming back nice and green now. I just hope it continues to push out because I was worried there that I wouldn't be able to restore my forestry lands. And if I didn't have that forestry land, I think I'd be well and truly screwed. Oh, seeing that lovely green color come back to my lands is actually a really satisfying feeling. It's about time that we got our water pumps going. So I'm setting up a battery of water pumps and storage tanks here. And maybe this will be enough water to keep my people alive. I don't know. These dams might actually be a problem too. I'm really glad that I uh, made my people consume half as much food and water. Because if I hadn't, I would have run out of food by now and already died. And I'm only like one cycle into this run. We've only managed to barely survive one drought. And that's after losing 60% of our population to starvation and old age. I thought that we would have like a really easy time if we had like an insane amount of beavers running around doing their jobs. But apparently just flooding an area with beavers and not enough resources to sustain them actually doesn't turn out so well for the beavers. I'm considering setting this island up as completely dedicated to farming and then blocking it off as its own district. Put all the utility and housing up on this hill and then use all this area to farm to supply my other districts with food. I kind of like that idea so I think that's what we're going to do. I think I have enough planks. Maybe it's a good idea to pause my lumber mills. I kind of wish there was a way to just set a limit, like don't make more planks than this number. But I'm not sure there is in this game. I think some of our pine trees over here are finally starting to finish growing, as are our birch trees. I think we finally have a sustainable wood income now. But I suppose technically this island is actually in range to just stay a part of my main district. So I don't think I need to separate out at all and I could just use it as a, as a housing area. Yeah, housing and farming over here, maybe a little bit of rooftop terraces. Too many of my guys are starting to die of old age, so I'm going to need a huge housing block over here because you can't have any new children unless you actually have free housing. So pretty much all of my wood production now goes towards housing. And yes, my, my food levels are still decreasing. However, my food consumption is also decreasing because my population is going to zero. So in reality, you know, we're going to be fine. We're going to be just fine. There's going to be absolutely zero problems here. As long as you don't think that starvation and mass death are problems, there will be no problems here. Comrade. Uh-oh, the second drought is coming now. But I mean, we're fairly stable, all right? We've got a huge farm island. We've got a huge forestry island. We've got a little bit of gathering. We've got water pumping. We've got a very fast river. My goodness. I think we may have actually just about hit carrot equilibrium. Because 
I haven't gone down to zero carrots in store and my food has been relatively stable for a while. My water has continued to go down, but I think I'm close to equilibrium on that too. <laughs> Enough of my people have died now to the point where I can actually sustain my population. I have about half my people in housing. <laughs> Hashtag goals. We, are, we have enough housing for half our people. We're doing great. Oh no, we've got stranded beavers. That's not good. I mean, they are homeless and unemployed, so their loss isn't that important for my town. But I think we shouldn't just let them sit here and starve to death. That's probably not the right move. Okay, I, th I think, yeah, now they've got a way out. All right, they should be fine. Round two of the drought, and I have absolutely no way to capture water. The first two droughts are kind of forgiving anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. The big downside is that a lot of my carrots will die, and uh, my trees won't be growing during the drought. So I do need to figure out a way to uh, actually get maybe some water storage of some kind over here. It's funny because my carrots can actually survive the drought. The, the problem is that it takes so long for the water to come all the way from this side of the map that they actually die before it gets here so you can see they're all dying um, which is hurting my food income but I think I think we're gonna be just fine in the long run we're on our third cycle which should mean all of these trees should be coming to fruition very soon I do feel like I've I've really answered the question though can like a colony of 500 beavers survive and well technically the colony is still alive there are no children here so eventually this colony will die of old age. We've been losing people every single day to just old age. So is this sustainable? It might eventually get to a point, but I'm going to go ahead and say no. I don't even think <laughs> I don't even think it's possible to keep a colony of 500 beavers alive. Death just becomes a necessary evil in in beaver society. I think my goal right now is to actually have a child be born inside my new beaver society. We're only down to 37 homeless people and 76 unemployed people. Now granted, we got to that point by virtue of like <laughs> not feeding my people, um, which feels like a little bit of a cheat code in order to uh, get around social issues inside your beaver society. What's that? There's not enough food for our beavers? What if there was just less beavers? Finally, another wave of wood comes in from my forestry area. I swear to God, I just have not been able to get enough wood to provide infrastructure for all my beavers this entire game. Like, it was the first thing that I rushed was a renewable wood supply, and I'm still struggling. One more house, and homelessness is a thing of the past. Oh, we finally did it! We beat homelessness! We have ended homeless, it's over now. Now we have spare houses. Oh, children are immediately born! Amazing! <laughs> I kind of think it's funny, like, the idea that none of the beavers would date each other because there was no housing. You know, they were having a hard time starting families because there was nowhere to, like, have babies and, like, raise them in, like, a nice place. What, are you gonna raise your kids on the street? It's almost like the, uh, it's almost like the real world. Hmm. People don't have a good place to live. Probably not going to be having babies. Oh, we got another wave of new children. I think that might actually be the moment that tells us that this society is now sustainable. Since I've taken care of my people's need for, um, for housing, I may as well also try to take care of their need for entertainment. A couple of rooftop terraces will uh, make people happy to socialize with each other. I'm pretty sure if you have access to a campfire or a rooftop terrace, you actually do have higher fertility, which will be helpful <laughs> in resupplying my town with fresh beavers to uh, to work the water mills and stuff. I probably don't recommend starting a game with like a thousand beavers or 500 beavers, but it definitely sped things up. I was able to get to this really sustainable point uh, pretty quickly. It only took me three cycles. And while I don't have a sort of water pool around here to try to keep my my trees from dying i do have a surplus of wood food and water now and most of my people are employed there's a few people who are still kind of mooching off of society but mostly i think this actually works just fine you'd probably get to this point quicker or just as easily if you started with like 20 to 30 beavers i don't think you actually need hundreds of beavers i think it's actually a hindrance because they just eat all your food and cause problems but that's going to be it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this video i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time bye bye